Right, Taylor, the last 24 hours, thousands of you have sent me messages regarding the Dr. Judy Mikovits interview being taken down. And why was it taken down? Is it censorship? How, what do you think about YouTube? This is unfair what they're doing. They're targeting you. We should create a resistance and go after YouTube. And then today an article was written about me. Not the nicest article by MIT Technology Review. I'll put the link below. This was written by Abby Allheiser, who used to be with Washington Post. She reached out to me two days ago on Twitter. We got on the phone together 45 minutes. And she went through an interview. And obviously a lot of things wasn't in there. And we talked about that. And some things are, which we'll talk about as well. But here's a couple things I want to share with you. I think it's very important for me to manage expectations with you uh, since this is a channel, you know, 2.2, 2.3 million subscribers worldwide. Here's a couple things you need to keep in mind. Number one, Valuetainment doesn't have one audience. Valuetainment has a handful of audiences. People will come to the channel. Some of you don't watch certain shows that we have. For example, there are those that just want to see the topics they have for entrepreneurship. Valuetainment for the longest time has been the number one channel on YouTube for entrepreneurship on views. And there's many, many people around the world that watch it just for business. There's those of you that like the interviews that I do, whether it's Kobe Bryant, Kevin Hart, Jordan Peterson, you know, Mike Magic Johnson, Q, whoever it is, you like the interviews. There's some of you that like the mobster interviews I've done, Sammy the Bull, Michael Francis, Frank Collado, Oscar Goodman, and you know, all of these guys because I grew up watching mob movies with my dad. Maybe you watch Godfather, Casino, you know, Donnie Brasco, uh, Carlitos Way. So there's a level of curiosity to know how much truth there is this, to this life and what kind of power plays could they have taken a different route in their life. And I, I kind of want to know their lives. And then there are uh, interviews I'll do and topical things I'll do on U.S.-China trade war, U.S.-Iran. I'm from Iran, so I talk about that. Uh, I've been in the financial industry for 20 years. Day before 9-11, I worked at Morgan Stanley, so I talk about finance. And then topics that come up in my life. This topic, vaccine, I have no, I had no idea it was going to create this much controversy. Here's what took place. My wife and I have three kids. And we're sitting down talking to our friends, very uh, uh, respectable friends. Some of them are doctors. Some of them are business owners, very, very successful business owners. And they took a different position with vaccine. They're anti-vaccine. They're not vaccinating their kids and they're just not going through the process. And for me, we have vaccinated all our three kids, 863, by the requirements. So have I. I was in the Army. When I joined boot camp, I got 11 shots with an air gun on my shoulder. They told us, you're part of your government property, so we can give these shots. We had to sign off that maybe something could happen to our body. My wife has also gone through vaccine. We're not a family that's anti-vax or anything. But when people come up to me with stuff, and many of you guys started sending me messages with Dr. Fauci, coronavirus, we decided to go interview people. I called my booker and I said, I want you to give me the biggest pro-vax names, doctors, and I want you to get the biggest anti-vax names, doctors. He sent me a list of names. No problem. And then the first people that I reached out were all anti-vaxxers. We started doing the interviews. And when I did the interviews, I'm not sitting there promoting it. By the way, I'm not a journalist. Here's what you, I don't work for Fox, CNN, or MSNZ. I didn't go to school, Columbia, to get a degree in journalism. That's not this guy. That's not what I did. I'm a father first. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an investor, I'm a curious content creator, I'm an expert when it comes down to business, and uh, some other things that I do myself, a little bit of bodybuilding I have fun with, and some other things that I, I, I create my content around, but I'm not a journalist, meaning I, I'm not working for any of those companies, where I will, I'll be held accountable for that. If this ever becomes a media company that's tied to journalism, then that's a different story. But I'm not at that level right now. We're just simply trying to learn, okay? That's what it is. So then all of a sudden, this led to people saying, I cannot believe you give this platform. Why would you do this? Why would you have all these conspiracy theory people? This is not a conspiracy theory channel. Neither am I. Uh, uh, I'm doing interviews. And by the way, somebody today on Facebook commented on my page and she said, uh, she said, you know, I used to be a follower and I cannot believe you're doing this. And ever since you're doing this, how can you do something that 99.9% .9 of doctors have talked about? And, and she's kind of going through like, shut up and just move on. It's not my style. I lived in Iran 10 years. One of the biggest things I love about America is freedom of speech and freedom of press. I love it. When they were pushing back with all the media stuff, I want media to be able to talk because when... Uh, ever somebody talks too much good things about uh, Trump, I go, to Fox, I go to CNN and MSNBC. Whenever people talked a lot about the good things about Obama, I went to Fox because I want to see opposite arguments because your haters will always find the leaks and the kinks. All of those negative areas they'll find. I always love 
When my haters, when my competitors say bad things about me, I read all of it because I learn how they're trying to poke me. That is how I'm wired. Maybe you're not wired like that, but I'm wired like that, okay? And the other part about me creating content, I don't create content to win people over. If I did, I would have created a different kind of content. I would have stayed away from a lot of different content. I create content the way I create content. And it seems like there's an audience for it. If you're here, there's something about value Timmy you like. When I walk around and I'm at the airport and everybody comes, oh my gosh, Pat, this video has changed my life. This channel has changed my life. I've become a better man, a better human being. I question everything in my life and I'm trying to get better and I'm reading more. It's great. It did its part, right? Now, some of you guys are diehard value tainers and some of you guys have just subscribed because you're watching a certain segment of it. But that's very important for you to know my position. Now, next position. Why was this article, uh, this video of Dr. Judy Mikovits taken down? Because if you go on YouTube and you look at all the other interviews, there are hundreds of Judy Mikovits videos up there where she's saying stuff about Anthony Fauci. Why was mine taken down? One of the things I've noticed with YouTube is YouTube doesn't like videos that go viral because that has a tendency of really creating a lot of panic in people, especially if it's a message that's going against the Fauci or anything like that. I get that. So there are a lot of Judy videos that have 40,000 views, 20,000 views, 5,000 views. No one's taking those down because that doesn't concern them. What concerns them is videos that are going viral. So they take those down. And Judy's video got 1.5 million views in six, seven days, and they took it down. Totally get it. No problem. So how do I feel about YouTube taking that video down? Because we did uh, go back and forth, and they told us why they took it down. And we understood. We said, okay, no problem. Come here, coach. Jump up. Come on. Come here. You know, uh, we, you, there's lightning back here. My dog is always scared of lightning. Say hello, by the way. All right, here you go. All good. So, uh, so look, you know, I get why YouTube would take it down. But for me, when somebody says, I can't believe they did that, you know, all this other stuff. Here's why YouTube took it down. When this article was written by MIT Technology Review, what MIT did is they reached out to YouTube and they asked YouTube why they're letting those videos stay up. So in the article, you will see when it says, we asked YouTube for comment on all three videos on Tuesday afternoon. This is two days ago. Judy was still up. By Thursday morning, which is today morning, one of the three videos, an interview with anti-vaccine conspiracy theorist Judy Mikovits had been deleted for violating YouTube's medical misinformation policy. Fine. So maybe YouTube was concerned that why is MIT Technology Review reaching out to them and maybe they're going to write a negative article about YouTube and they better take it down. Fine. Now, did YouTube do the right thing to take it down or not? It's irrelevant. Why is it irrelevant? Pat, you should be upset. Let me tell you where I'm upset. I'm selfishly upset because my editors work very hard. I'm selfishly upset because we produce a good product. I'm selfishly upset because for every minute of editing, it takes a lot of hours and our guys put a lot of time into it. So I love my editors and the work they do. So I'm upset in that area. Now, do I think YouTube has it in me and they're coming after me? Absolutely not. Why not? Okay. I grew up, I lived 24 years in LA and when we would go to uh, the beach and wanted to go to a restaurant, you would many times see no shirt, no shoes, no food, right? Which means what? We don't have to serve you food. Put your shirt on. They can do that. Put your shoes on. They can do that. I can be upset and I can be kicked out. I can voice my opinion. I can do that. Like we both have the right to complain. I can go on Yelp and write a negative review about that place and trash the waitress called Catherine. I can do that. Is that the right thing to do? That's object. You can't, you can't define that, but I could do that. And they can also do that. YouTube can take a video down and YouTube can even change the goalpost every time. They can do that. I don't own YouTube. Sometimes we forget YouTube is a free platform. Sometimes we forget YouTube is free. You know, you create a channel, you create videos, you get an audience. And then when you gain an audience, YouTube advertises, negotiates with advertisers. Then they advertise on your channel. Then you get paid. You don't negotiate with advertisers. YouTube does. You simply edit and you put your product up. This is not a complicated thing to do. This is what YouTube does. It's a free platform. We are very quick to forget that 
you don't own YouTube. Now, what freedom do you have? You also have the freedom to get upset with YouTube and go create a better product. Look, Lamborghini used to be making, you know, uh, 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 different kind of trucks. They used to make trucks for a living. And he wanted to go work for Ferrari. Ferrari turned him down. He got pissed off. He went and created for, uh, Lamborghini cars. He can do that. He has the right to do that. And Ferrari can say, we don't want you to work for Ferrari. That's why when people come at me and they say, oh my gosh, that's unfair what they did to you. I don't think it's unfair. I don't think I'm a victim here. I'm not a victim here. I'm a very lucky person to have a content and a voice that millions of you follow. Whether you like it or not, I'm, I'm appreciative of that. A few billion views with Facebook and YouTube combined. Well, maybe we're doing something right. And without these platforms, I'd just be a financial guy and a business guy. I wouldn't have this audience. So I don't come from a place of, oh my gosh, these people there. So that's that part. So I hope that kind of clears up how I feel about them moving that. I have the right to be upset. They have the right to change the goalpost. But I also understand why they took this video down and not the other 99% of videos because this one was going viral. It was the most viewed video of Judy Mikeovitz's interview and they took it down. Now, let's set that part aside. In here, I want to address what she says here. She says here, uh, as of Wednesday, advertisement through YouTube's ad services were playing before the videos and Bed David's merchandise was for sale on a panel uh, below the video's description. What she's trying to say is that I make money off these videos and they're fully monetized and some of them are no longer fully monetized. So a couple things you need to know about. That advertisement, the merchandise on YouTube below it that we sell shirts or whatever, that's what YouTube came up with just a year and a half ago. That, two years ago, the, in the entire sales, since 2018, we've only made $4,000. Like we don't wake up so It costs us thousands of dollars to edit videos because it's all in-house. My editors are not outside, it's all in-house. We don't make money off you. I don't take an income off valuetainment. I don't take any income. I've never once, as of today, I've never in the last, since 2013 January that we've had a YouTube channel, I've never once taken income. Never, I've never taken income. I'm fine, I run other businesses. Maybe one day I will, not today. I don't take any income. I don't need it. Valuetainment is a loss. So on this part, I understand why she said it because she's trying to say that they just create the video because they wanna make money, all this other stuff. She can say that, but that's just not the truth. And then she goes back and she talks about on the next side, uh, uh, while YouTube bans creators who break the rules too many times, some conspiracy theories are using collabs and interviews as a workaround getting other YouTubers to either host them or talk about them on their channels. Meaning, Alex Jones is kicked out, he goes to other channels. We had Alex Jones on two years ago on 9-11. And I got him on to talk about, you can't sensationalize and talk about stuff that you're not 100% accurate about, you read it somewhere else. Now Alex has gotten some things right, but you can't sensationalize. It was a pretty heated uh, conversation I had with him. And a lot of people that are Alex Jones supporters can't stand me after that interview. Cannot stand me after that interview. So I understand what YouTube is saying, and I'm sure they're doing that. David Icke's been taken down. Many of you messaged me saying, Pat, I think you need to interview David Icke. Why? Because I think you'll challenge him. So if you watch David Icke's interview, it's not been taken down. They talk about it in here. She says, uh, but David told me his fans believed he would challenge Ike. The result was a lengthy, at times combative discussion. It didn't do particularly well, but the Ike interview led to a surge of suggestions of new guests. What started happening was I started getting emails saying, have you looked up this topic, that topic, which is true. Many of you have done that for a while, and he asked me questions. I didn't get David Ike for viewership. I got David Ike because he talked about certain things, and people are going around taking down the uh, 5G towers, and I don't bring guests online. I've had, you know, General Spaulding, Gordon Chang, uh, Daniel DiMartino, Peter Schiff, Ray Dalio. It's not to, hey, you better go out there. We're not doing, you can't, you can't tell people to go out there and protest and take down towers. It's just, so I brought him down because I went through conspiracies with him at first. He didn't like it when I called him a conspiracy theorist. The interview almost didn't happen. He said, I'm a conspiracy researcher. I said, fine. I said, you believe in reptiles, reptilian. He got upset. He didn't want to cover it. Why did I bring that up? Because before you believe everything else a person says, you have to also know what else they believe in. That's why I did that interview. The interview didn't end with David saying, I'm Patrick's best friend. I love Patrick. I'd love to be on back again. I'm, that's probably never going to happen. It's an approach I took. We have a platform. You want to come? You're going to be challenged. You want? Great. No, it's okay. 
I totally understand. So that's the David Icke part. Now, the other part in the interview, she asked me a question. And she said, I asked Bed David whether he felt any responsibility over airing these views on his channel, particularly potentially harmful claims by his guests, urging viewers to ignore public health recommendations. My answer was, I do not. I am responsible for what comes out of my mouth. I am not responsible for what comes out of your mouth. Now, I said that, she said, for him, that lack of responsibility extends to misinformation that could be harmful to his audience. Hence, that's what CNN, MSNBC, ABC, and Fox have been doing for years. As long as the guest is on their side, they let him say whatever they want without verifying. How many times have you seen that? So if they're going to hold me accountable to that, they better hold CNN, Fox, MSNBC, ABC, and all the other guys accountable to that because that's what mainstream media does. And these are professional journalists who went to school to do this. I'm just an entrepreneur and a content creator. I'm just a regular guy that's trying to learn to see what's going on. I don't do this to pay my bills with this. This would not pay my bills today for what's taking place. So, by the way, if, if, if uh, you're asking me about Abby, I messaged Abby afterwards and I said, Abby, a lot of things wasn't covered. She says, yeah. I, she says, because uh, my editor is not going to let everything go through. I wrote it and they cut some stuff out. I said, fine. But the thing I also did tell her, I said, I appreciate you for being fair. This is not a nice article about me, but at least she's being fair and respectful, which I can appreciate. I've done other interviews with other people that didn't come out right. This isn't my first rodeo. So, and I'm also not somebody that refuses. I don't want to talk to you. No, let me just avoid it. And then you see Patrick Bay David had no comments. That's not my approach. I'm pretty comfortable in giving you my beliefs. Now, a couple other things to give you with this here for you to be thinking about. Is censoring free speech, is any of that stuff taking place today? Is it? Yes. Um, how is it taking place? Can you go to dinner and say whatever's on your mind? Yeah. Uh, can you go on YouTube and say whatever's on your mind? Probably not. Why? Because you don't own YouTube. So what? They can't do that to me. Yes, they can. If they choose to do that, they can create guidelines to say what you said is offensive and can create harm, we're going to take it off. We don't want 5G to be linked to coronavirus. We don't want anybody to say any claims about Anthony Fauci. They can say any of that stuff that, stuff that they want to. I'm not in charge because I don't own Facebook. I don't own YouTube. I don't own Google. I don't own any, any of that stuff. I already told you that. You already have an idea where I'm at with that part. Now, the final thing I will tell you for you guys to be thinking about is that... I have no plans of changing my approach of how I interview guests. I don't bring guests and I say, like Ray Dalio, if you look at Ray Dalio's interview, I got so many negative comments about Ray Dalio. Well, most people don't know. I agree with 95% of what Ray Dalio says. I challenge because that's how things in my mind get clear. Because if I have a chance to sit with a $19 billion man and he's gonna be able to break something that there may be something in my mind that's gonna click, and maybe the audience is watching is going to say, wow, that was amazing. Because I watch a bunch of different Ray Dalio interviews and I say, why is everybody just sitting here doing regular interviews? It's not my style. I don't want to do those interviews. Maybe that's why Ray Dalio's interviews with us got a million views and a lot of the other ones don't. We're going to go to places that maybe others don't want to go. I understand that. That's our style. That doesn't mean everybody likes it. I don't expect everybody to like it. But that's value -tainment. There's an element of value that brings. There's an element of entertainment. And there's a part of movement taking place with Vietnamese around the world. And I create this content and I try to be true. I know a lot of people say, I'm so true to my fans. I would be lying to you if I said that. Why? I'm true to my values and principles. That's what I'm true of. We just had a vault conference that got canceled, the event. So we sat there and we said, what do we do with this? People paid thousands of dollars to go to this event. You know what I didn't do? I didn't spend a single penny of that money that was given to us. I simply held a conference call, webinar with everybody, and I told them, if you want a refund, send an email. We will refund you 100%. No questions asked. And then we also gave options if they wanted to do other things, and some did. But we're not sitting here trying to, hey, let me, it's not our model. If you're somebody that's a true guy attainer and you've been with us for a while, you know how we do business. But I want to prepare you for something here. I want to prepare you to be offended with me in the future. I want to prepare you to be upset with me in the future. 
I also want to prepare you to fall in love with me in the future. I also want to prepare you to say, shoot, I just like this guy. Don't agree with everything he does. I just like his approach. Very confident. Today, we're having a conversation with a couple of guys. And one of the guys asked me a question saying, Pat, what is your formula of leadership? I said, you know, it's so funny. So many people leave me, but all of them come back. Most of them come back. Why? Because if you work with me on a day-to-day -day basis and you leave me and then you go elsewhere and then you ask yourself when you're by yourself, what really upset me the most would pass? It's just a straight shooter. Shoot. All these other places you work with, people tell you something in your face and they say something behind your back. I'm so sick of weird people. At least with Pat, he was a straight shooter. And people value that. And I hope you do too. If you do, you'll be a subscriber of ours and maybe share this with other people and watch it. If you don't, maybe you won't. I totally get it. And by the way, Dr. Judy Mikovits's interview can be found all over the place. It's just that one cannot be found. I even think the link is still on my website. I think the Wistia, it's not a YouTube one. If you click on the link, but maybe it's going to be there. Maybe it's not. Just look in the description. If you didn't see it, you can still see it. If not, other people have taken it and put it elsewhere. It's not hard to find it, but I do understand YouTube's position of taking it down. We've never had any issues with YouTube. We're not a, we don't have any strikes with YouTube. We have a very good relationship with them. Well, we plan on keeping it very good. I think it's a very good platform. I recommend many people to get on. And I even contacted some other people that were having challenges with YouTube. And I said, you can't just get up there and bash YouTube. These are good friends. These are people that I like their content. I won't say their names because I'll keep it between them. They know exactly, if they're watching this, they know who they are. I just told them, I said, listen, you're getting up there bashing YouTube as if YouTube did something wrong. YouTube is getting so much pressure from mainstream media. The CEO of YouTube, Susan, got interviewed by ABC on 60 Minutes, and they were not happy about what YouTube is doing. The CEO of YouTube has to try to build a social media company while the mainstream media calls them a journalistic company and they have to be held to the same guidelines. And she says, we're not. So I know they have a lot of pressure. So if that inspires you to start your own YouTube, I suggest you go do it. If that inspires you to go start your own Facebook, I suggest you go do it. But if that also upsets you a little bit and you come back and you realize how many good things these guys do, maybe it changes your position. So again, I didn't say I love everything they did. I didn't say I support everything they did, but I completely understand why they made their decision and we're not upset. The only area I'm upset about is my editors work their tails off to put that video together. That is the only area. They were disappointed. I don't want to see their faces disappointed because there's nothing worse than working hard and a product being taken away. But I do understand their position. Having said that, if you want me to interview anybody that uh, that's on the ProVac side, anybody that you know that would agree that is a big name, not just anybody. I want a big name, author, books, all of that. Send me a tweet at Patrick B. David and we'll reach out to him. If you know them personally, please have them contact us directly. This dog is freaking out because lightning's everywhere. Why you worry so much? Why you worry so much? You're in my lap. You're safe. Anyways, I appreciate you watching this. I hope this kind of gave you a little bit of clarity on what my thoughts are with what just happened with Dr. Judy Mikevitz interview being taken down. If you want to read the article, I'm going to put a link below. And any other things that we may have that you want to look at, it's probably going to be in the description. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and do so. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.